right back, Charlie. Oh, 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 Are we live, people? Deluded, I'm back again. Thank you very much for tuning back in each and every time. First things first, if like myself, you're in the United Kingdom, obviously, good morning, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and of course, good night. We're applicable to you lot around the world. I hope everyone's having a good week. I hope Arsenal fans, we have a good, you know, we have a good evening. But yeah, in terms of just our general lives away from football, with it being the midway point, it feels like this week isn't going as quick as I thought, but progressing quite quick. I hope everyone's having, you know, a good week in terms of first thing, their mental health, their physical health. So continued and better health for you and your loved ones. In terms of our goals, hopes, dreams, ambitions, aspirations, all overcoming hardship then i wish you lot all the best and i hope you lot are making moves in that regards people as usual i appreciate the support you lot give me on youtube and twitch everyone that was at my twitch stream at 10 a.m i appreciate that we previewed arsenal liverpool among many things make sure you're following me on such it's pinned to the pin message in the chat make sure you're taking part in the voting as well on that please hit the like button people again in terms of content we are 10 a.m we're here at 11 30 we go back to Twitch at 4.30 to play FM. 7.15, an hour before kickoff, which is 8.15 between Arsenal and Liverpool. I'll be live on YouTube and Twitch doing a watch along for Arsenal, Liverpool. And 11.30 a.m. tomorrow, which is obviously Thursday, we'll be reacting to the Liverpool game. And if you give me between now and, to, between now and the time we go live, I'll obviously have the watch along ready for Aston Villa Arsenal so you lot can set your reminders and, and do all of those sort of things. The grind don't stop. So yeah, man, appreciative to everybody that's locked in and things like that, man. Without you lot, it'd be pointless to be here. And I, and I really, you know, you lot gave me a chance to live life on the terms that I want and, and have something to look forward to. And I'm very appreciative of that. So thank you to you lot, man, as the journey to 50,000 is still alive and kicking on YouTube and obviously can't forget Twitch and them things. Now, we can talk about Arsenal Liverpool if you want. I'd, at some point, I want to talk about Darwin Nunes. We've heard it before, but Saliba New Deal rumors. We've been linked with Eden Hazard. Um, just bear, I just got bare on the best of days. I got bare tabs up in it. So whatever's there, whatever's there. And obviously, as I like to do, because I'm pretty sure I've probably missed some sort of news. Games have been rescheduled as well, folks. Um, so yeah, man, it's a busy day. Let me. Change that to an hour. What latest things regarding Arsenal have come out, mate? What things have come out? You know, shout out to Klopp. He's been quite, you know, been praising us and that. But That's decent. I haven't seen that before. All right. Sorry, people. I'm just clicking weird things in the... He's trying to grab stuff for you. You know how it gets people just trying to find stuff for you, look. As always, you know, always. And again, half of this stuff is nonsense, but it's great talking points. Nonetheless, people. So, yeah, hope everyone's doing well and safe. Omar, don't think I didn't see them comments about lateness. To be fair, I have good reason. Admittedly, the Twitch stream overran, but I can't lie. Man, I had to go toilet, bro. Like, not that I want everyone in my business or to know my business, but when you got to go, you got to go, bro. It's rather out than in. I'm not trying, brother. Like, hey, come on now, bro. Like, you just, no, no, I'll take being a couple moments late. This one was legit. This one was legit. And even have time to refill the water bottle. See? Starvation for you, Lord. That's technically not starvation what's the thing dehydration would be the fancy word appreciate you lot for tuning in elbow elbow cough yes people can't take hazard after he spanned cochlean wait, wait, you can't beat him join them atletico are the burnley of the champions league really gave me a lift last night with my covid seeing brexit football on the center stage of european football mike first things first i hope you're on the mend in relation to covid and better health my guy man said hazard let me know your opinions we really are a retirement home Says Jungle Jesus. Appreciate you for tuning in as always, man. Hazard's another William. 
Big up from Canada. Do you think we should slash rotate against Aston Villa? DS, I can't lie, my guy. We just have to get through this Villa thing. But on one hand, yes, naturally, you want to be in a position where we could be like Liverpool and say, you know what, maybe we can rest someone because a, a Firmino can come in, a Jota can come in. A, you know, in midfield, they can play Kate or Thiago and there's not too much of a drop-off. The only thing they don't really play around with. And for me, you definitely don't want to play around with at any point in the season is the defence, you know. Timiskas plays here and there, but Robertson, if fit, nine times out of ten, you and Trent, you're the guys, Matip and, and Van Dijk, nine times out of ten. I know you've got Kanate who's starting to get inroads and come into the team and things like that, but you, you get the point. So there's every there's every reason to. I would say, hopefully, Tomiyasu is back. I'd probably leave him out for today. Um, I don't know his status, and I would love Tomiyasu to be back for Liverpool, but if there's a, a small percentage of a concern about my man, Leave them, leave him out for the Liverpool game because if we looked at it on a cerebral thing, I do want to try and beat Liverpool. Obviously, we don't really beat big teams, and it will be a good boost to us. And it's three points; it keeps the winning thing going on. But if we looked at it, seven to nine points would be the dream. Six points is probably the reality from these three games. And what I mean by that is you're probably kicking yourself as an Arsenal fan or connected to Arsenal if you don't take three points off Leicester, which we did. Aston Villa is a different entity. Coutinho, all that stuff. Early morning Saturday, we'll deal with that one. But you probably back yourselves against them, man. Hit the like button. Can we get to 100 likes? Unexpected high bills if you haven't. Probably back yourself getting something, excluding Liverpool. When you remove emotion, maybe we said, you know what? You beat them lot. You have a go against Liverpool. It is what it is. So maybe. But at this moment, I can't see myself advocating to rotate players. Maybe Tommy Asu win. I wouldn't... If, if all my defenders are fit, they play... Midfield, who else do you play really in relation to Partey and Xhaka? Especially because, I don't know about today, but Partey and Xhaka are starting to look good together and individually. Odegaard plays every game he's fit for me. Could look to bring in Smith Rowe and it would be lovely for Smith Rowe to smack them up because, you know, they, they somewhat thought they had a chance of signing Smith Rowe last summer. But yeah, I wouldn't say rotation. I may be Pepe, but I wouldn't rotate for the sake of rotation. Was it just me or the standard of football last night was poor, frustrating to watch? Glad we don't play. Of course, it was a shit game. I did a live stream for that. My man DG, big up from the Philippines. Shout out yourself, JT. Don't think I've seen Philippines here before, but love that, man. Come on. Fresh trim. I'm trying. I'm trying to be like you, look, man. I'm trying to be like you, look, man. I'm trying to be like you, look. Forget Hazard. We don't need to have another William. Uh, opinions are welcome. You look harsh, man. You look harsh. You look harsh. Very harsh. I'm gonna offer my opinions in a second, but let's make a time a time some time stamps. Zero zero. Would you take Hazard slash I guess general Arsenal talking points? Call it that man. I hope that we get a result against Liverpool. We have something going for us, but we need to keep the energy levels up. We just need to rise, raise our, our levels, really. We're doing well. We're doing better than we was. We're in a fight for the top four. We're in a very difficult period in the season now. We need to try a thing. You're 100%, you're 100% right, man. We need to raise our levels because you don't get a bookie. You don't get 10 minutes to warm up. You don't get to play well for 80 minutes and switch off for the last 10. Liverpool, you need to be good at all times. And... Based on our last couple of games, I would say the Leicester game is where we, watching it again, I'd say we we tried to get back to those high standards. I feel we had a good 20. I feel there was a period towards the end of that half, first half against Leicester, where we kind of let them build some momentum. You do that against Liverpool, it's a problem. So if there is even a smidge of us being on top of Liverpool for the first 20, we need to do something. Liverpool, nine times out of 10, are the dominant side. So we probably have to sit back and respect them. And we're going to have to be careful with the ball. So it's a different sort of game. But really, by Liverpool standards, they've started games a bit slowly recently, you know. You look at the Brighton game, they started it very slowly. You know, their back five is quite good and their defensive record and, and their winning record is great. But, the, you know, they get caught at sixes and sevens and you see Trent have to cover. Sometimes Trent's out of position defensively. Sometimes Van Dijk and his centre-back are too wide and apart. Liverpool are human. They will give you chances, but it's a different game. It's easy to play against a low block. Liverpool are going to be like piranhas. They're going to press you out the ball. They're going to try and make you hit it long. They're going to have a high line and probably we're going to have all 11 players, 10 outfield players behind the ball, 11 in our half. There's going to be times 
Ramsdale's going to have to get it, get you out. There's going to be heart in mouth moments. There's going to be times, but if you make a mistake, go again. We need bravery. These are the games you need to raise your, your levels. You know, if you're in midfield, can you play that pass? And if it doesn't work out, can you do it? Can you be a bit brave and hold on to the ball and buy a foul for us? Can you get us higher up the field? You know, Cedric, the world, including myself, quite scared for you today. But you're probably going to play. The one man who has faith in you beyond just the obvious is Mikel. Repay that. And at the same time, have that healthy respect for Liverpool. But don't over-respect them. If you want to be mentioned against these teams, if you want to be these things, you need to go against them. You know, we're not always going to play teams that are suffering with injuries and things like that. You know, we need to relish it. We've got a good platform to build upon. We're definitely coming into this in better scenario. But Liverpool, hand, out, hand it to us nine times out of ten. All I want to see is that we've tried. We've really tried. Really tried. Against City, the ref could say what he wants, but we tried. Looking at the two goals we conceded against City, it's our fault. We're fucking about for what led to Xhaka, and Xhaka's obviously been silly and conceded the pen. Kevin De Bruyne were knackered, we're defending with 10 men. End of the day, Kevin De Bruyne has been given time and space to look up, find the teammate. We've lost our individual battles. Laporte and uh, Rodri did more than Ben White and Holden in that particular period. And again, you know, you're going to have brain farts and it's down to us to, re to relish this. You know, obviously, if I'm Liverpool, as good as Gabriel's been, the age these guys are at, they make mistakes really and truly. Gabriel's had some shaky moments. Ramsdale made a big save, but he also palmed the shot into people and he looked kind of nervous the last time we played Liverpool. Ben White's had some suspect moments. Tierney has. They should relish Cedric. I like my back five. I like our, with the exception of Tommy Asi not being fit, I like our improvement in that regards, but they should still relish it. We're learn, we're unlearning bad habits that players have got, got because of the age they're at and actually here, but we're still not, we're an improved defensive side. We're not necessarily a good defensive side, you know. The statistics speak for themselves one of the best in the league but it is what it is can we take advantage of set pieces can we be brave because Liverpool players it looks like a culture shock sometimes for me follow runners off the ball we know what it is you know midfield they're going to take control Van Dijk and that they're going to be in our half playing passes the fullbacks are going to be their creativity the movement from the front three at times it's unstoppable um and, and, and whatnot. But we need to relish it. Follow your runners. We don't follow runners well enough. We need to follow runners. If you don't follow runners, you know, we got away with it against Watford. You can, and, and teams like that, you cannot do that against Liverpool. You cannot do that against Liverpool. Again, movement. Look at the goal Brighton conceded. It's a fantastic pass from Matic. They've got goals all over the field. You know, Matic passing, obviously he's not better than Van Dijk. He doesn't get the praise for his passes that Van Dijk does. Look at the goal Brighton scored. I mean, conceded. It's a great pass from Matic, but go and look at the movement. You've seen Diaz when it's too late. Just like the two goals we conceded against Watford. So let's get back to it. Be a bit fearless because what's the worst that can be said? The same headlines that are written? I don't know. So we need to. And again, I, I, we're skipping ahead a bit. But if we look at, if I just read certain things to you, this was on Liverpool's website. I look at the 11 interesting statistics ahead of Liverpool's trip to Arsenal. A win tonight, we'll see the Reds, you know, them Reds, Record their 100th away win in all games under Jurgen Klopp. A victory in this game will see Klopp equal their points tally for the whole of last season, which weren't the best by Liverpool standards. Liverpool could record a third successive win at Arsenal in all comps for the first time in their history. We know Jota likes scoring against us. He had six goals in six games against us in all comps. Three of those have come with a, with a substitute appearance. Firmino has eight in 13 against us. That's his most productive, along with Watford, against a single opponent. Klopp has only lost one of his last 12 games. Sorry, one of his 12 games against Arsenal. He's got three draws and eight victories. Liverpool have scored in 37 of their 38 Premier League fixtures. So... I need to see a reaction when you inevitably concede. I don't want to concede, but realistically, we probably are going to concede. You probably have to out... It is football, but you have to outscore them. And I go back to the, the game in the cup. We was doing well, you know. Again, guys, Tommy Asu, a couple guys had injuries, issues. They soldiered on, they played. The fans were doing their thing. We were on to Liverpool for about 21 minutes. And then the, the pivotal moment came when that... 22nd minute when, as I just said, Jota scored. Heads dropped from us. It's like, as I said, it's like, oh, the whole, everything we planned for in the week, the fans, it was, it's like once, once it was all Disney Channel and that. It's like once something, that a spanner was thrown into the works, we couldn't react. And then you saw Liverpool forgive themselves for their nervy start or their slow start. And I, we kind of crumbled really and truly. That can't happen today. You've never conceded before. React. 
because you probably won't keep a clean sheet today, you know. Since the teams met in the second leg of the League Cup 55 days ago, Liverpool have had 12 fixtures, Arsenal have had six. Obviously, we're not in champs in that, but, you know, you lot will probably look the fitter team, unlike Leicester at the weekend. A clean sheet will see Jurgen Klopp's side equal the club's record of six in succession against Arsenal, having previously set that in 97-2000. Give the fucking analytical team something to work on, to work on, man, really. You know, there's only been one goalless draw in the last 45 league encounters between these two clubs. So again, clean sheet is probably out the window. It's ideal, it's desired, but probably out the window. So have faith, bravery. We've been taking shots. We've actually been hitting shots on target. Come on, you know. Liverpool could also record a second a second successive league double over Arsenal for the first time since 97-98. So you lot have been making new groundbreaking stats in, in our club prior. You know, when we weren't on this good run of form or whatever, we, we were breaking stats we didn't even know were there to be broken negatively. These are some things that I know is probably inevitable. Liverpool re re realise these things, but I wouldn't want it to be a case now if I'm completely honest. So we're going to have to relish it. We're going to have to stand up to be counted, people, and all those sort of things. 59 likes. Hit the like button if you have not done such already, folks. It is what it is. It is what it is, folks. I hope everyone's doing well and safe. Slap my thing in there. Thank you. There we have that. Thank you, YouTube. No worries. Uh, Zhao Felix was balling yesterday. Ah, I think people are gassing it, man. If Hazard comes, he wins the Alexis debate. Shameless. Trust. Trust. I can't lie. If he, if, if he does, why not, man? Forget. Well, we've already seen that one. We don't need Hazard services. I'll, I'll always prefer Luka Jovic to Hazard. Currently has gone far away from football and might not pick four many time soon. First, I'm, first thing I'm hearing coming into the stream is unexpected high bills. Pattern that up real quick. Not a happy man. I hope you're happy, man. A man said, Oi, Super Saiyan Chocolate Darling DG with the mad trim. I appreciate that, man. <laughs> come on. You know, come on, villain thing. Arsenal shirt and that. I know the babies are looking at me and that, man. The darlings and whatnot. All them pretty brown skin babies are all preying up my again. You get it? Come on, shout the darling them. Come on. You know, I'm definitely the piffiest content creator. Especially Arsenal. Sorry, no one comes close. Like, no one. Like, come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Shall I do light skin face? That's how you, that's how some of you look, do that, innit? <laughs> Hey, it is what it is, man. It is what it is. You're gassing me. You're taking me off course, man. We definitely shouldn't rotate against Villa. If we lose today, we have to keep momentum against the mid-table teams where United and Spurs don't have any. Hazard is finished. No more Chelsea agents. We definitely need a winger, in my opinion. Am I playing Hazard on the wings, though? I understand wanting to be pragmatic with our fixtures and squad rotations, but I just want us to go full tilt against Liverpool. And beat them in Liverpool too. I hope so. Hazard is definitely a ridiculous baller, but he's not serious right now. There are young and less injury-prone wingers to get like Noah Lang. Story DG, good morning. Looking forward to the game a lot more than I usually look forward to Arsenal versus Liverpool in recent times. Tomorrow's a good day in Ireland, so I might head out tonight for the game. Appreciate that. Depressed Onion, hopefully there's, there's better times to come, man. Gabriel is doubtful due to his wife's pregnancy. I mean, hopefully the baby's born and we can do what we're doing. But if he isn't, if he's not available, then man, I have to stand up to be counted. Obviously, that's a bitter pill to swallow because that means Tommy Asu and Gabriel are out. And obviously, Gabriel and Ben White, we probably, we do, in my opinion, we overcompensate on them because I know Jack has got a new role and Jack does play nine times out of ten and part of his form. But... I don't really feel we've got them technicians in the middle of the part that we need. When you look at Liverpool, how they control the tempo of the game nine times out of ten with a Thiago. I'm not going to lie. I'm not trying to gas his thing, but Henderson kind of does that beyond ob obvious. Chelsea got a couple of them with Jorginho, Kovacic and that. City have got that. You know, other teams around the world have got that. I don't really feel we necessarily have that. So, it is what it is. I feel we lose a lot going forward with... With, without that, and I feel uh, Gabriel and Ben White have to overcompensate, especially when we're trying to play out from the back or we're trying to get the ball into midfield or get the ball at some point into the lackers and Odegaards. Because nine times out of ten, it's them man punching it into these players before we all see the 
you know when you watch the Arsenal highlights of the passing and things like that. You know, it's very it's very rarely them them other guys, man. Appreciate that. This is a Champions League game. We need to put a marker down and Holden needs to step in and do a job. Apparently, Gabriel is a doubt wife pregnant. I mean, there's very few things more important than football. Kid's one of them. So again, big up him and his wife. First things first, if the you is if if the kid is really coming into this world, we hope that a healthy baby with no complications is born. And we hope his wife or his girlfriend or whatever has no com no, no complications with doing such, man. You're gonna be a footballer for 15 or so years. You're a father until the day. You're dead, in it? And even then, you're still someone's dad, isn't it? So, big up that. And it's quite an exciting time for Arsenal. Pepe had a you. He's having a you. Well, I can't laugh. I was Saka and Martinelli and Smith Rowe with the checks. You lot are getting. You might as well. Might as well bloody start it, isn't it? Well, the minute we get to 100,000 on YouTube and Twitch, might as well start a football team, man. You know why not? But then again, do I really want to be doing the stream and saying, guys, please, I'm I'm being back. My youth's making better. Ah, 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 and all that. I don't know. But um, yeah, man. Is what is it's baby season. I was at a baby shower the other day. Well, two baby showers, the one on Saturday as well. Just looking around, so I told just looking around like kids are cute and that, but I like being able to play with these kids. Like, go back to mommy. Like, <laughs> That's there. <laughs> like, right, oh, you got to take these home. You can't take out the battery in that. Crazy. But um, anyways, man, we need to take advantage of whenever they make any mistakes and take the fight to them. We need 100% concentration from every single player on the pitch and subs. And again, react to setbacks. Marcel, shout to you. You're a pagan. Well, you're not a pagan now, but for 90 minutes you are. Big up my general DG. Big game tonight. Two informed sides in the league at the moment. But you already know we love playing the Gunners. Come on, Reds. Hey, we've won the league at your ground. I have to. I got Marcel. I got nothing. I got I got nothing else. There's nothing else, really. There's nothing else. I got nothing else to chuck to you, man. Fuck it up. But yeah, man, big up yourself. I have faith we'll turn up tonight. It's nice to not be scared of big games. Got to give Arteta a lot of credit for that. I only wavered after the Liverpool loss on him, Everton loss on him. I wouldn't say I'm not scared. I'm just a bit more confident that there's less shenanigans. But fundamentally, the consistency is there that we've not been taking too many points from them. And, you know, we was better against Man United. But at the same time, we played stupid games and won stupid prizes. That's why we didn't get a point there. You know, against City, we played stupid games and won stupid prizes. Now, when we bought Chelsea, we was class. It is where it is. We were shit them times. Might, some might say we still are. There was nothing we can do, um, really. So it is well. it is. Spurs, we did our thing. Again, they might be different on the Conte. And, and, and arguably, beyond the obvious, it's going to be harder against them because Spurs are a counter-attacking team. We don't counter-attack. A bit like City, well, we do, but we're not a counter-attacking team. We come out. The one time Spurs look half-decent is when they're playing teams that want to play football. That don't necessarily, you know, the minute you are reg a regiment, two banks are four behind the ball, Spurs are in trouble. Which, again, we're playing teams that are going to look a lot different. Really and truly. Leicester looked a bit different since the last time we played them at home. The consistent thing was we won. So, yeah, man. Where do you think Xhaka plays tonight? Deeper next to Partey or ahead of Partey like in the next few games? Well, if it's broke, don't fix it. I think Jacques, I think Arteta might make the radical approach and, and do that because it might be something, quote-unquote, unpredictable. I wouldn't advocate that. I think as good as Partey is, no man's an island. He's not invincible. You know, as good as he's been in that newfound role, I think you've got to probably play in a more withdrawn role, really and truly. Especially because Salah and Trent are going to overload on that right-hand side. I'm going to need... Whoever's on the left is going to need to do their job. Martinelli and Tini have to improve defensively in that regard. But I'm going to need Xhaka to, over, to go over there, if that makes sense. So let's see what's going on, man. Do you think we'll revert to a 4-2-3-1 today? I mean, football's quite fluid, you know. You can see elements of a 4-3-3 or 4-2-3-1. You can actually see elements still of that 4-4-2 with Odegaard slightly behind Laka. So I'm not really fast, really. I don't know, man. I wouldn't go with a back five. The only way I go to a back five is if Gabriel, probably, if he is out. But then again, who do you play there, you know? We're not really at that level yet where we can do the city thing where they can play four at the back for free for three or so games and, and 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 kill it and whatnot. We will lose our fluidity and whatnot. So there is logic behind it, but I wouldn't necessarily do that because these lot will look like they ain't played that. Brazy. So it's an it's an interesting debate. It's an interesting one to have. Don't get it twisted, you know. Don't get it twisted. Would have said no to Hazard, but the way Coutinho came back to the Premier is making me think twice. Might be time to invest in Darwin Nunes' stocks. Bro, you see him score a vital goal. 
is ready, man. I think Gabriel will turn up. I hope so. Big game tonight for both teams. I reckon 3 1 Liverpool. Cedric is starting, right? I mean, we'll have to see an hour before kickoff, but I'd imagine so. Shout out my Baltimore ones. Good morning from Baltimore, Maryland, DG. Shout out the Americans and everyone else all over the world. I would say Thiago is the only controller, so it's a worry if he plays. If he doesn't, I'm more confident we can disrupt their midfield. Nah, I mean, to a lesser level, Henderson and Cater kind of do that. Of course, it's not to Thiago's standard. Exactly. Gabriel has every, every, every right to scream that. D, big up, DG. Don't do it. Wait until you're in your early 30s. To be fair, I want a kid before 30. I always wanted to be a young dad still. Yeah, I'm 30s. I need to have it while I'm in my prime, man. I need to still be the guy. I need to still be the guy. Like, I still need to be the guy. I can't have my son looking like the guy, looking like me in the prime and not me and whatnot. I need, you know, I need to be saying, is that your dad? Like, girl, you need to be saying, is that your dad? That's not your dad. That's not your dad. You know, is that your brother? What you? No, man, it's still, you get me black, don't no, crack in that. You get me? Is what it is. So, Roger, I hear that, but you get me? Good man, man, man. No red cards will be helpful. Trust, we're playing against 12 men. You know you know, Liverpool are going to foul us. There's going to be pen shouts. We're not going to have it. We don't have a great matchup in attack. Laka isn't going to have time to hold up the ball against their centre-backs. Not confident, to be honest. Just have to adapt. Is Arojo good? Don't see him play often. Yeah. Does Arojo replace Gabriel? Uh, I don't, wouldn't say that. City to man Harlan to Man City imminent. That's good for them, man. I thought he didn't care about projects. I appreciate the separate ones. Is Gabriel playing tonight? Just seeing that he didn't train yesterday. Do you know anything? I, just, I don't know. I don't know until kickoff. You know, like somebody said, if they're you know, if his wife's expecting, then be with your wife. You know what? And a great you know, it is what it is, man. I'm already an uncle. How do you mean? <laughs> I've been an uncle for years. How do you mean, dog? <laughs> Proud uncle. But yeah, man, it is where it is. I'm in the early phase at the moment. This rate, I'm hella late. But hey, boy, some of you lot's things are going to stop working, boys. So you might as well get them in before you can, man. But um, yeah, man, let's start looking at this transfer business, people. What's the time on the clock? It's 27.33. That's what the timestamp will be. Uh, well, I've got so many tabs, I don't even know where we're starting. What's this? Uh, you're not the most beauties in the eyes of beholders, but it's not the most aesthetically pleasing person to look at now is that this is bullshit so let's clear close that smack the like button people if you would be so kind uh where should we start let's start with eden hazard what are we doing man <laughs> so yeah man on that note let's start with eden hazard where do you start though man this Let's just go for every article. Arsenal make contact over potential move for former Chelsea star Eden Hazard with Real Madrid willing to let the Belgium leave after a difficult three-year spell at the Spanish Giants. He's contracted for, for a good minute. Real Madrid was his dream. So I don't know if he wants to give up on that so early. I don't know if, you know, he wants to come back to the Premier League. I don't know if he would have the motivation having won stuff at Chelsea, been at Chelsea, been at Madrid, played under countless Certy managers to play under someone who's developing but a novice in Mikel Arteta at a project where you're 29 30 is great for the Sackers and Smith Rolls and Odegaards, but where are you going to be within those three years? And obviously, the injury record and the finances again, I'm not saying it's not worth it. So, like someone said, the Coutinho, Coutinho came back to the Premier, he's looking certy, you know, it, it's completely different because we signed Odegaard for 30 million and he's 24. So, you could sell him, it's very difficult to flog Hazard. And obviously, with us paying the price and ultimately getting rid of Ozil's wages, Williams' wages, and Kolasinac's, Abamian's, etc., Hazard, if the quality is there, it matches up. But evidently, if it doesn't, there's problems there, people. And in fact, on that, you know, I think I made some notes for the pros and cons, really. For me, the pros is form is temporary, class is permanent. He's an Arsenal player. He's very fantastic on the ball. We know Hazard, people. You know, we know Hazard, Mercurial, Jibbler. He sat enough Arsenal players on their arse. He's done what he's needed to do in it. He's a baller. He could play off the left, play off the right. Play actually as a false nine, probably most comfortable at this time in the 10. Very much an Arsenal player. We all remember his Lille days when he used to get linked with Arsenal. 
knows the City could potentially want to arrive with a point to prove. He's one of those players that needs love. Arteta has shown that he can give them other guards and whatnot love. So if he could give him love, you never know what this guy could do, a bit like Coutinho and Gerrard. So they're the pros. For me, the risks are the evident ones. What's the hunger? You've won all there was to win at Chelsea, bar the Champions League, which you lost. You left and they won it. You're at Real Madrid, which was your dream. Where's the motivation? You've done it all, haven't you, really? You know, obviously his age and with the baggage that comes, it don't really make sense. You know, we've we've kind of been here already with players, whether it's down to wages or just evident inconsistencies. We're slyly, if we're slyly, I know Lacazette's form's there now, but slyly Lacazette applies to that. More so David Luiz, William, Mesut Ozu and Abamian, um sort of thing. Obviously injuries. He's a confidence player. And as, as much as I, uh, listen, I like confidence players, but we need a bit, we need some more resolute Donnies out here. We don't need people that always, that not that he's insecure, but I don't really think we have time to be telling man um, how good they are all the time. Or with every good game, they think they're the best in the world. With every bad game, they don't. So I don't, I think we need a bit more resolute folk. I don't feel we necessarily, definitely at 30 odd years of age or whatever as well. Um, respectfully, will he even rate Arteta's thing? Because you've played under some big managers, you've done it. Will you rate Arteta? He's still learning the thing. You might sit there and say, but Jose does it like this. Carlo does this. I'm not saying people do that, but that's something to consider. The injuries as well. And just evidently the finances, you know, the finances to when the man's fit, there's issues there really. I don't know if Hazard's one of them man that, yeah, it's injuries or it's a thing where I've got a little knock, I can still play, but I don't want to play. There's a lot of footballers that don't do that, that don't want to play. I don't think that's the case, but yeah, man, the main thing is just the hunger and finances for me anyways. They're, they're, they're the only thing that, that kind of matches it up, people. But yeah, away from it, from all of that, Luka Jovic fits the Odegaard mould, would have loved, would, sorry, Luka Jovic fits the Martin Odegaard mould of unloved young European talent. We do need some experience sprinkled around the squad, but we should pass on him and try aim for a younger prospect. Arteta preaches building a young squad for the future. This news kind of sounds fake. It just sounds fake because we're linked with Hazard. But at the same time, he has put his he has spoke about experience and he's leaned on Partey now. He's gassed up Cedric. He spoke previously of El Nene, Lacazette, etc. etc. Eden has Chelsea agent as well. Eden Hazard gives me William vibes as a potential signing. He's 31. So he's, yeah, it's not 29 30. He's not what we need. Plus, he'll want huge wages. I think he'll be better than William because he's actually good than William shit. But I hear that, you know, the wages is, as much as I'm making a pet case about wages, it's not my money. So I don't really care. But again, the wages to the quality and, and, and all the baggage that comes with it. Who knows? He might come here, look hella confident and never have any problems. But it's a, it's a risk that, again, you give yourself no exit strategy. You look at our transfer business last summer. We've said it before. The one thing I'd give them, fundamentally, you want these players to work. But if 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 Ramsdale doesn't improve, you can make your money back. You're making your money back on other guards. You're getting your 16 million back on Tommy Asu. Well, saying that with Edu, anything's possible, isn't it, really? Because we ain't really got the best track record in selling and things like that. I would love to take him. He's very good. Eden Hazard is world class. I'd have him any day. The only hazard he brings is our hazard. The only hazard he brings is to our wage budget, fam. Brazy. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. DG, bro, why do so many players don't so many Arsenal fans don't want to play if he's not gonna get straight into the starting lineup? These guys just don't want a good backup, and that's our problem. We've got no bench. What was the experience quote you've previously said? Overrated, but not understated. I mean, I, I think I think experience is overrated, but it cannot be overstated, is what I previously said. Experience for experience sake is you can't just have a blanket statement and, you know, and say experience. There's certain men that are 21 that are more experienced than someone that's 27. You know, it, there's different things. I think it's overrated. You can't just be screaming experience. It's like with Lacazette. I'm not against Lacazette staying, but for this example, you know, He's experienced. He knows the club. These are things that should be there, but you cannot understate it. You cannot underestimate having certain people around the block and are less naive. You look at how Real Madrid dumped out PSG beyond the obvious. So it can't be overstated, really. But experience for experience sake is dead. And, you know, 
I argue that we've got young players. I, I class Ramsdale, Tomiyasu and uh, Ben White as experienced players. Odegaard the same because they're significantly more experienced than what we have and they all have solid grounding. Certain people might say they were young. But yeah, Arsenal have reportedly contacted Real Madrid over a potentially... Um, over a potential stunning move for, for Real Madrid star Eden Hazard. As you know, he's enjoyed a difficult three-year spell at the club, which has been plagued with injuries. La Liga leaders are said to be willing to let him leave during the summer. And they've been trying to flog him, but we've just heard he wants to stay. And we all know him, Asensio Vallejo, a couple of them guys, they, they, they want them to move on really and truly. Um, apparently, you know, we'll look at this publication, but they've reported that Arsenal have initiated first contact in talks between both camps. I mean, could it be on a loan? Because you heard Chelsea were looking at him on loan. You know, I don't understand what he, he's, a, you know, for me, he's an exception to the rule. If you could sign him and the conditions are right, why not? Even though I would probably pass, but he's not a number eight or a nine. And I kind of want to see them things arrive first, really and really and truly. If I'm completely honest, you know, again, 130 million. Chelsea shagged them. 65 appearances, just six goals. Feel sorry for him. His dream look is shit. This season, he's made seven starts and has been left on the bench in the last three games. You know, it is what it is, people. So we'll have to see how that one develops. Arsenal line up Eden Hazard. At 31, Eden Hazard is not having an obvious season at Real Madrid. He's determined to fight for his place, but the Belgian does not want to let go while several teams are ready to reach out to him. And obviously, he's got a World Cup to think about. The new Garden of Eden since the summer of 2019, the Santiago Bernabeu has been Eden Hazard's playground. He's been getting bullied in that. After making, but uh, listen, just can we get the stick to the specifics? We know this is a childhood dream of his. Um, scrolling down, apparently the Premier League still appreciates Hazard. Um, all four of 23 matches in all comps, including nine as a starter, the Belgium Inter season at Real Madrid is over, it'll be time to sit down and reflect because several teams are working behind the scenes to relaunch Hazard, whose talent is beyond doubt for them. According to our information, Arsenal are thinking of him and have initiated the first contacts. The Gunners have taken information without progress for the moment, but the interest is real. Another Premier League club on the case. Blah, blah, blah. Chelsea have also maintained contact before the collapse of obviously what's going on there, which by the time the transfer window opens, I'd imagine Chelsea have a new owner and will be able to sign and get rid of and do whatever they're doing, people. So that's what it's saying. We've initiated contact. Maybe we're just putting the feelers out. Maybe he's just an option if something happens. I don't know, people. Um, these lot are saying the same thing. Um, you go back a few years. I found some quotes. Eden Hazard said, for me, the players I looked up to were, were Zinazine Zidane and Thierry Henry. It's difficult for me to admit because of my relationship with Chelsea, but I really liked the Arsenal team at the time. They had players like Perez, Wiltord and Vieira. And these were his quotes from this people, which, I mean, any player that was in France and them things there, they were going to have that. Uh, the ex-agent on Eden Hazard on joining Arsenal in 2012, it was his number one choice. His father number his father's number one choice too. But for me, it was a categorical, it was a categorical refusal even when I really liked the club. It's history Eden accepted this veto, pussy. On rejecting Arsenal, there were too many young people. It would have been likely you. Arsenal would have been a decision of the heart, but not that of a man. I'm not sure he would have reached the same maturity as a man, but also as a player. You probably would. You know, it probably would have. It just, you would have done the Seth Fabregas thing, the Nasri thing, where it's not going to correlate to here, is it? So it is well, it is, people. And again, you just look at some of the Real Madrid fan, like, fan sites and that. We already know they want to get rid of Bell, whose contract's done. Isco, Marcelo, Ceballos. Ceballos still trying to hang on to that career. Smash the like button, people. Hazard, Jovic and Marino this summer. And, as you know, they're, they're saying the same thing. Arsenal are interested in Hazard and have made the first contact with him. Cut the track for a sec, people. Don't forget, later today, it's Watch Along Business. So smack the like button on that one. And what's this? That's now. That's crazy. But, um, yeah, getting back to this, we've already spoken about this, you know, one goal and two assists in 22 for, for Eden Hazard people. So, yeah, this is just correlating the exact same thing. So, yeah, as you can see, uh, allegedly, you know, in fact, before we get into any of... Look at him. Since he's played for Real Madrid, he's not been able to buy much luck, can he, people? Again, you look at it... It's a fat one. Just even in, in, in this season, he's, well, it's technically it's only made you miss four games since you've been available. But then you had this. 
So yeah, man, it's probably one to stay away from. Obviously, if the conditions are favourable, then then why not? But I can't I can't see it happening for us people really and truly. So that's Eden Hazard. If I'm completely honest, you know, Arsenal have offered Barcelona defender Ronald Arojo a six million euro contract. I don't believe this because I think Arsenal and United are interested, but I think his agent is leveraging the fact that Premier League clubs are interested in Barca's situation because you've seen. How many Arsenal players get into the Liverpool team? I don't know, man, really and truly. If he was doing a combined 11, Tini versus Robertson. I think Robertson probably edges it, but you could make a combined 11 with that. You've got Salah on the right. So, Saka, Odegaard. Saka, Odegaard, Smith, Rowe, Martinelli. I think Klopp's name dropped these guys. That's about it. Partey on, on his day. Other than that, psh, like I'm seeing starting 11, Arsenal combined 11s with Liverpool, Ramsdale's in goal. I hear it, I hear it, I hear it. Hazard is literally William point two. No thanks. Gnabry or Hazard, I mean, if we could bring back Gnabry, why not? We're about 10 years late with Hazard. Let's go get more quality youngsters. Why get Hazard? We need Jao Felix on the team and I think our defence is strong. Oh, wow. Some of you lot are having some good comments, but yeah, man. Arojo is a beast, snap him up, but where does that leave Saliba? Boy, that's why I probably don't buy this. It would be a great signing, but you'd have four good defenders, you know, so I don't know what would happen really and truly, but we've been linked with him. I don't really buy it, people. I don't I don't buy it, but we've been, we've been linked with him. We're going to get into this Saliba stuff, but um, allegedly Arsenal offer Barca star 100k a week contract to come and join. Apparently, Gerard Moreno has revealed on his Twitch channel that Arsenal and Man United have made a contract offer to Danny Orojo, who Barca are trying to commit him and Gavi to new deals, people. He's still only 23 Uruguayan as the world is for He's a good defender, man. I think he probably will stay at Barca or go United. They're, they're, I just think these agents pulling a blinder, really. Romeo revealed that the Red Devils have offered Arojo a net salary of 6.7 million if he agrees to join them. Arsenal have offered just over 5 million, which is about 100k a week. Um, so we'll have we'll have we'll have to see. But when you go through some of these reports, as you can see here, people, as per the latest on sport, Barcelona's contract negotiations with promising prospects Ronald Arojo and Gavi have hit a standstill. And Gavi's been linked with with um Liverpool for what it's worth, people. Both in the ongoing campaign, Arojo has grown into a lead will be entering the final year of their respective contracts boss at the end of the season gavi's current deal consists of a release clause of 50 million and obviously the buyout for arojo is 200 barcelona have been trying to tie them down to a new deal for a while now um but as you can see it's still stalling people and apparently the, the report's gone on to say negotiations have hit a dead point over differences of wages being demanded and offered uh, gavi and arojo are believed to be all which I think is fair to get around that because they're all part of this rebuild. They're all vital in their own regards, both of whom were handed new contracts recently. The duo feels that the current proposals do not pro properly reflect their status within the squad. Barca are insistent they are not willing to compromise on their position, despite reports claiming they are willing to up their offer. If they want to continue, they will continue, but with Barca's conditions is the stance that the Catalan giants are taking, report sport. So, yeah, we'll see, man. They both could get Premier League interest and there's decisions to make there, people. So, yeah, he's got contract proposals. You know, you start looking at certain things. Arsenal are interested. We've offered him a six million euro deal. You know, it's no secret that the 23-year-old wants to continue playing in Barca, but at the same time believes his, his, his salary should be revised at least to the lines of those who have recently renewed their deal. So I think he will stay. I think his agent is getting in his head and things like that, but they're allowed to do that. Get what you're worth at 23 years of age. Don't let the club twang you. You're getting better. You're becoming a leader. You're becoming a guy at international level. Gavi, I don't think you're better than Pedri, but you should be able to come on stuff as well. You're playing for Spain, you know? Arguably, in the last 12 months, you've probably been doing a lot more than Fatty, who's unfortunately been injured. So I think that, you know, I, I could understand if he joined Arsenal United. I think there is a degree of interest, but I think this might be a was and where clubs are being taken around the houses. Where that would leave us, I would be open to a Rojo. You know, you've got a Rojo, Ben White, you could probably shift over to right back. A Rojo, Ben White, Saliba there. 
Gabriel, Tomiyasu's ability to play there, that probably means Rob Holding's obsolete. But I don't think we're going to... This is, you know, we might be able to get a cut price, but I don't think we're going for a centre half, and at least not now. He does want apparently Arteta does want a left sided centre half, in which I wouldn't necessarily say he's that, but he can play there. Contract renewals, proposed, proposed moves for Christensen, Kessie, and Missouri. Kessie has apparently agreed to go there as well. Um, Barca are concerned about the direction about two contract renewals they are aiming to complete. The two men specifically for this are Rojo. Um, the two players want to stay at Camp Nou, but they're upset because they cannot see any coherence in the financial commitment that the club is asking for them and the offers made to players they intend to sign for next season. Arsenal hope, um, man said Arsenal, Barca hope that the two obviously stay at the club, but they are beginning to fear for contract ex extensions, especially in the case of the Uruguayan international. Discussions with the defender's agent are not going as smoothly or as positively as the coaches and executives at the camp. No agreement with the midfielder, but in his case, there's more optimism. The delay in reaching an agreement is largely due to the fact that the players feel somewhat aggrieved. They accept that Barca are, are going through a bad financial period. And they know that they'll have to make sacrifices. That said, they cannot understand how the players they are negotiating with for next season, namely Christensen, Mizari and Kessie, have been offered contracts worth around €6 million Euros each. For Arojo and Gavi, this approach is out of step with the sacrifices they are asking to make. And I would say the same. There's inconsistencies. Man said Arojo back up. He's definitely not going to be back up to Ben White or Gabriel. He's definitely taking someone's place. But I understand that. But that's this is where it's really coming from, people. Like you can see, you don't really, we're going to get into this, by the way. It don't really look like much beyond that. You know, it's peak for Ainsley Maitland-Niles. This article isn't nice to him. Where, do, where does all this Gnabry talk come from? Surely he's going backwards if he returns to Arsenal. Arsenal haven't played in the Champions League consistency since he's left. He's off the back of winning the Champions League. Arojo will stay at Barca. It's one of Barca's gems and he will not go without a fight. He might not, but if he's contracted until 2023, they don't renew the deal, then psh, it's life, isn't it? Arojo, White, Gabriel and Saliba are all interchangeable, so it would be a great problem to have, but an ideal situation if we qualify to compete in Europe, it would. But at the same time, I like stability, you know. I don't think he can play all of them, man. Why couldn't we have all four centre backs? You could, but it's not FIFA, bro. Like you can't even Pep, he's got three quality centre backs, but there's periods certain people have to wait. Like you can't have one week a Rojo, Ben White, then the next week, Saliba a Rojo, then a next combination, and a next combination, and then a random back three. It's not a big point as to why our season's been good, is and I know it's not always the case because we're not gonna have one competition and stuff, is playing the same team, you know. How much relationships can Arojo and Gabriel build if one minute they're in and out of the team? It's not going to work, is it? It's a fan it's a fallacy. It's a fantasy. Of course, there's injuries. There's a lot of games to be played and stuff, but it's a fantasy. It's, it's fully a fantasy. Maybe they say, you know what, we'll take the 30 million on Saliba and keep it moving and go for him. But I think Arsenal's interest is being is is being just just exaggerated to a slight degree. I think there is interest. You heard Arteta wants a centre-back. I thought the centre-back that would come in would probably be someone that's more of a backup, but who knows? Uh, Partey can play. No way we consider this bum. On my way back home from work, listening to DG, smash the like buttons, people. Hey, I appreciate you. Odegaard has created 49 chances this season compared to 84 by Ozil in his best season and 51 by Alexis on his way. Shout out to him, but yeah, man. Bit dead. Big up D big up DG ready for our three points today. Again, staying confident. Hey man, I'll deal with that in the evening. Man, I'll deal with that in the evening. What if Saliba isn't signing a new deal? Then if he isn't, sell the man in it. You gotta make something happen. He's contracted until 2024. If I'm Saliba, I'm not signing. I would probably run my deal into next season. I want to see what the club has for me, and then I might I might look to go for one. Ainsley Maitland-Niles' his move to Roma hasn't banged. He's not playing really and truly. It seems like Jose has rubbed him out already. Um, apparently, this article has said it's gone so badly, in fact, that the Arsenal loan has been on the bench for the last three Serie A games. He now seems out of Jose's plans. And to be fair, he's not Jose's player, per se. And as long as you return and we can sell him for something, why not? Apparently, he's been described as a flop. Um, he hasn't been on the pitch since the, the 27th of February. Roma have won two of their last three games and drawn the other. So it seems like they're doing just fine without him, which doesn't bode well for Arsenal. So, 
you know, hopefully Ainsley Maitland now can get something out of that really and truly. But right now, it's looking fucked. Uh, from one centre back to another, Arsenal set to hold primarily talks over new deals for on loan youngster. We've heard this before, you know, and rightly so. They want to sign him permanently. And the 20-year-old, he's not going to be the Messiah. He's got a lot to learn. But I do want him to get an opportunity to learn and be part of this project next season. Arsenal are expected to hold talks with Saliba over a new contract as the club review the situation, according to reports, yet to make a competitive appearance for us. He's impressed. He's made 36 appearances. He's had some good and some bad games, like he spoke in February about his, his level has dropped. And Marseille are reportedly keen to bring him on board on a permanent deal. But Saliba is said to want to remain at Arsenal to prove himself. He's currently contracted until 2024. Arsenal are reportedly set to open talks over his new deal. Playing time has been a major issue for him. Saliba has also been deployed at right back. And you can get away with him and right back in, in games where we're not going to be asked. He's also been terrorised, like against Nice there. You know, he can do a job there, but is what it is. And especially it could be another guy, you know, technically we're probably going to next season with Ben White, Cedric and by God's grace, Saliba. And you two will probably be gone. Who knows, Ainsley? You could bag a spot in the squad as a midfielder if you just accept that. I'm a side man, but I would want to go and play personally. So apparently in September, Arteta indicated Saliba as part of our plans. He'll come back for pre-season and he'll be with us. Hopefully he'll come back after playing a number of games and his performance raising and his development progressing in the right way. That's why we made that decision. I know that sometimes it's difficult to explain or understand after the money. That's, that's, that's that really. And truly, um, what has you said about Jonathan David? Fabrizio Romano has said what we already know, that Jonathan David is expected to leave Leo this summer and Arsenal and Newcastle are interested in such people. But the latest he said is, well, been a bit of an overkill there, really. So we'll see what happens there. What's, what's this? We're going to get into that. Darwin Nunes is who Arsenal need to be going for. Uh, you know, apparently he'll be available in the summer. You all saw him in the champs yesterday. West Ham had a £48 million pound euro bid rejected in, in, in January. This is someone who should be on our list, Darwin Nunes, man. And, you know, he has scored as many goals in as many starts he's had this season for Benfica. 26 goals, two assists in 26 games. I know people might say Portuguese league, etc., but... There's been guys that have been serving clubs well out of that league. So it is what it is. They spin the block again for Arsenal transfer news. Right, what's this? Arsenal want to host Community Shield this summer with Wembley unavailable. Eh? We didn't win the FA Cup, fuck all of that. Arsenal and the, and the London Stadium both want to host next season's Community Shield with Wembley unavailable as it's being used for the Women's European Championship final. All right, we're trying to get some peace. The Premier League is due to start on the 6th of August with the Community Shield penciled in. The Arsenal and the London Stadium are open to hosting the Community Shield while other grounds are thought to be in the running too. Villa Park hosted the game back in 2012 when Wembley was being used for the Olympics. Tottenham are understood not to be in the running as their stadium is hosting a Lady Gaga concert. Arsenal hosting the Community Shield could also impact the format of this season's Emirates Cup, which is still being finalised. It was due to return this summer and it's provisionally scheduled for the final weekend of July when the Community Shield takes place. So, a bit random, but shout out to that, people. Shout out to that. Going back to Saliba, Sagna has said, what has Sagna said? He insists there is no risk in relate risk rift in relationship between Saliba and Arteta and is confident his countrymen will thrive at Arsenal next season. I've watched it. Sorry, he said Saliba is an Arsenal player that's on loan at Marseille. Do you think next season he'll be ready to come and play? Sagna replied, I've watched Saliba this season and his performances have been great. He's been one of the key players defensively. He's very calm with the ball, almost too calm. He can play out from the back. He's very strong, good with his challenges. All of this can improve. Like There's a lot of improvements and people are going to see that. I'm not trying to belittle him. It's just I hate when fans do this. They'll gas up these young players and he deserves it. But they're the ones doing the most and, and criticising Arteta for not using him. The minute he makes a mistake, like with Ben, like White and Gabriel, they'll turn on them. A lot of people want these young players, but fail to understand to get there. You know, if you want to be a cha if you want to be a champion, if you want to be a championship cyclist and cycle for team, team GB at some point in your life, you're going to be falling on the floor and cutting up your knees. 
that's a centre back. You can't say a centre back is going to go to the next level and be shocked when they do shit things. Just like with a striker, and that's one thing. A lot of people cry and bo- and waffle about this potential thing, but I think he just needed some time to play. And Mikel understands that. And remember, the man's twenty, you know. And I, I'm not saying that I know any more than anyone. I'm watching the flipping guy. I'm seeing good, bad moments, hot and cold. He's, he's a young man, 20 years of age. He's going to return more experience. He's going to return more confident. But allow him in it. Just let the man develop, man. But what can I say? I've seen fans turn on Saka and then bread. Call Smith Rowe, Smith Rowe kills flow, then bread. See people turn on Gabriel. I'll never forgive any Arsenal fan that said Pablo Marie's better than Gabriel. I'll never, ever forgive you lot. But um, anyways... But I think at the age of 18, 19, you need to play, commit to playing every single weekend. He's not one for staying on the bench or not wanting to get involved. When you're at Arsenal, you need to go somewhere and play and progress. This is what it is. So I'm looking forward to seeing him back. He certainly progressed in France, but the Premier League is a different animal. I think he has the ability to succeed and look forward to seeing him back. So, yeah, man, obviously... I think this is Arteta. We are really happy with his performances, how he's adapted and what he brings to the team. Sir, oh, this is Ben White, sorry. Um, hopefully he can get rewarded because the way he trains, the way he looks at himself and the performance that he's having is certainly raising the attention of a lot of people. That was his comments from the press conference where he kind of alluded to, you know, Ben White getting in the England squad, etc., etc. So that's that. I don't know why I'm looking at that, but shout out to you. We've already spoken on that. I don't know why I've got this, but what's going on? Agent reacts as Arsenal I 16 million Maestro Newcastle to treble wages. Let's see, man. Dan Danny Owen, I think you're gassing up the thing. My respect it. We've got to pay bills out here. What has actually been said? He's a good player. There's not much to, there's not much more to say. I've always liked the good one, says his agent. Fabian Ruiz has a pill throughout Europe. This is a situation the club, which clearly has its own ideas, will address that at the opportune moment. There's plenty of time to do everything. Need to be analysed. But at the end of the day, these decisions will be made by the people. In any case, it's too early to talk about that now. A bit of an overkill. Like I said, I respect the fact that man have to pay bills, but that one day was dead in it really and truly. Now, a bit of a gas. But anyways, I think that brings a, a close to that part. What are you lot saying, people, before we look at our games have been rescheduled and what I refer to as a fixture list from hell, people? You know, they've the TV rights, of, you know, that you see how this is why I fucking hate TV, because, again, the way they've done Arsenal's fixtures is just because they capitalise on this excitement of the top six and, and whatnot. Trust me, Charlie. Bro, I couldn't believe it. My man were gassing up Marie and Marie had respectfully nothing to do with Marie, but... The games he's playing are low-level shit games, like, respectfully. I don't know what happened in Madrid. Hazard goes there and ceases to be a baller. If Arsenal are serious, they will get a good striker or two, a right-back and another box-to-box midfielder. Right now, we've got a very good team, just a few tweaks needed. Facts, look how long it took for Odegaard to truly adapt. People need Pep Brada. Man was saying Odegaard's dead. Tab police, we're closing them. Allow me. Fans move mad. You know, look at the whole season. We're not even 38 games. We're 20-odd. Other players have started well and floated and found it back. Other players have slowly got into the groove. There's different heroes. It's very difficult to be consistent for 38 Premier League games. That's why the best players and the best teams are where they're at. And the way these where these young players, they're not ready for that. They're learning to be that. Like I said, and I've been saying, a lot of our players are unlearning bad habits because of the age they're at. Bad habits picked up at other clubs. Bad habits picked up here. And most importantly, they're unlearning and they're learning good habits now. The whole thinking is changing. You know, we need, we're not there yet. That's why we're seeing good or bad moments, man. About to go get up get my rest and get ready for this big clash later. Hoping for a good game. Big up, DG. See you later in the watch long, my guy. Love your streams, even though you're a pagan. Marcel, it's all love. You know, you never walk alone. I hope you man are alone today. No team can bench. No one can bench. No one has our can bench in a current Arsenal team. I ain't going to lie. I see the left wing open for Donny. I'm not going to lie to you, you Saliba should come and battle it out for centre-backs. Yeah, of course he's going to. He's probably going to come back next season and be the third choice because then man, there's the, piv- the pivot. He has to probably wait. When you get your chance, take it. I feel sorry for Ainsley, but his versatility is kind of his downfall. I'm still not sure of his best position. I just don't think you're a top-level midfielder. Like I think you're just a competent guy. You can put a foot in, you can pass the ball, but 
That's why, even though I understood it, I wasn't with that player ahead of Xhaka because he ain't got too much to his locker. He can be a right back. It's just the team's probably passed him by it. We should try offering Ainsley in a deal for Telemans. I, I, I wouldn't. I would probably cut it down, but Telemans is contracted until 2023. Might as well try and get top dollar, really. This is a really good stream for info. Thank you. Making me cry, man. Appreciate that, my guy. I don't know about that. I just think, you know, it's testament to you that we have a good chat. There's always some thought-provoking discussions and things like that within here, man. And without you, lot, it would be pointless. So I appreciate you, lot. Really, you know, keep them coming. Arojo is a monster. And as a Madrid fan, I rate him highly. I got him in Football Manager. You can get his contract. He's out next summer and his wage demands are too much for Barca. So Arsenal can get it. He dreams of the Premier League. Trust me, a centre back isn't a pairing isn't something to fuck about with. hundred percent, hundred percent. You know we've been down that road. Fair enough, they were shit players, but there was a week, one minute soccer artist, Mustafi, Louise, they're all in and and whatnot, and we're looking collapsed. Now these guys were meaty, but you get the point. You know a big reason as to why we're seeing stuff. Anyone that's played Sunday league football, relationships get built when you're playing together. You start understanding certain man's game as a centre back, as a defensive pairing, as a midfield, and things like that. You know, you know certain, like with Odegaard, you know, there's certain things he knows Saka's there. There's certain times he might know Saka's not there. It's about understanding your teammate. You might know I can make this further forward run because this guy can find me. I might know my teammate can't do that. So let me change it up and come shorter. A big reason as to, and obviously circumstances probably played a part, but I just feel we look a bit better fundamentally because I think Arteta is changing the thinking of some of these, man. And we're playing the same sort of dons, like, Sort of thing. Relationships are being built, man. No disrespect to Marie. I think Marie should be the backup of it. I don't rate Marie at all. I, I don't rate it. I, you're a good guy and that, but I didn't rate you before and you lost me. I He's one player he cut ties with in August because it's not that... I'm not on the scapegoating thing. I'm not really... I'm not really there. We still need rotation options. I'm not really on the scapegoating thing, but you lost me at Chelsea when Lukaku scored because... Lukaku's been brushed on his face and he could have went down. He wanted to score. Marie's holding. I, I can't deal with that. Like, I can't I can't deal with that. You're looking to the ref while something's going on beyond the obvious. I can't deal with that. Just like when Mustafi was shit, but the, it's not that I, I, I believed in you, but are you really, really, something died me. I was bracing down on our goal. Certain men are still at the halfway line putting their hand up. Listen, shout out the American Donny who's coming, but that one there, that one there sounding like brown envelopes. You're just you're just gonna get sold and things. But who knows, man? If you can come on and do a job, whatever, man. How much would you sell Partey and Odegaard for? Coming as a man you fan, we need a McFred replacement. Partey, I mean, it doesn't make sense selling him, but the only way I'd consider selling him is if we get our peas back, really and truly. Odegaard, I'm not selling him, but I can't lie, there's no selling. There's no selling. Not right now, anyways. We're just starting. Niles and Ainsley in the same boat. Ne Sorry, Nelson and Niles in the same boat to me. I like them both. They've never really come improved. I mean, they just haven't found the role. Not everybody needs... Look, you got to remember, Smith Rowe didn't do the sack of thing. He was in that boat with Joe Willett, Eddie and Nelson, and then he's gone on. You know, Saka burst on the scene straight away. Other men need to have little roles and, and other things happen. Some men are going to be the stars. Certain people are going to be squad players. I think Ainsley's a squad player. I just think they get it's, the moment's just passed him by. For Nelson, last 18 months, what the last year... Arteta said, go on loan. You didn't get on loan, so I can't be surprised you did not play whether William was playing or not. I would, you know, I'd, you kind of wanted him and were praying that he would bad up the Dutch league, innit? Man, don't know he's on loan. You know, when you think of Arsenal loan players, you don't know he's on loan. You don't. You know, man, I'm screaming Saliba, Balogun, you know, Brook Norton Coffee. shout out to him because he's had his red card, his bus case for the red card, which was never a headbutt, and he's in line to get a new deal. Man don't know Nelson's on loan. Yeah, he might pop up with an assist in the Conference League here and there, but it's it's meaty. And that's where Arsenal need to do a bit better. I think we need to learn lessons from, I believe, Reese Nelson um, and Eddie Nketiah and, and, and Maitland Niles. And that certain men are going to come through. They can be part of the squad for a couple of years, but they might need to be sold. And our academy needs to be self-financing. You can't tell me you could not have got 20 million at a point for Ainsley. You should have got at least 10 for Eddie Nketiah. Joe, I mean, Joe Willock's done his thing as well. So that's a good example and whatnot. And that's one, you know, should be able to get something. 
for other players as well. You know, our academy has to be felt self-financing. Not everybody can make it here. You look back at Sir Alex Ferguson, you look at Chelsea as an example, you look at Sir Alex Ferguson, young players would come through at United, but some guys wouldn't, and they would have decent careers, Josh King, et cetera, et cetera. They, we need to be on adapting, especially as we're self-financing, you know, allegedly, and have to watch our pennies. So it is what it is, man. I, listen, I can't lie. I'm I'm Haylen baby, and I don't really want to give up on Nelson and Ainsley. I still have small hope that both can secure roles in the squad. We haven't lost money on Mavropanos. You know, we haven't. We signed him for a couple of million. We've gained a couple of loan fees for the individual. Um, and we sold him for a profit. We could have made more, but yeah, I don't. I, I, we haven't. We, we, we actually haven't. Someone get that spam and Donny out of here. What the fuck's all that about? Love for whoever did that, man. Oh, what a... See why I prefer Twitch? <laughs> the fuck? We need to loan more players in the Prem. It needs to be the right loans, man. Just be loan the guy. If you're loaning, a, if someone's a, an organic sort of creative man, if, for an example, if someone's a natural 10, and you know he's only going to play 10 at Arsenal, or maybe at 8, but at 10. If you loan him to a team that plays long ball football, not technical, and they're playing 4 4 2, it's not going to bang, is it, for him? This is the thing with Nelson. Does Matt Smith have a future at Arsenal? I don't know. I don't know nothing about Arsenal. I'm, not, I'm just a fan. I would imagine the hymns, the Ballards, is probably gone now, isn't it? Ballard has, you know, Ballard could have, probably has more of a chance than him, but it's time to go and kick ball in that, man. Really? I don't even think Marie did a job. I don't even think Marie did a job. I think Marie, even, even when we beat Chelsea that time and Jorginho missed that penalty, um, you know, Marie, I think... I just, not even trying to do the agenda thing, but Marie, bro, you know, unfortunately, there's just some man you don't rate. Like, you can just see they're not levels. It's like, you can't really... There's some man that obviously don't want to sign for your club. You'll, you'll give them time. Like, I'd actually say I was... I was bordering on tears when Danny Welbeck signed, you know. Respectfully, I was praying the medical didn't bang. But I liked Welbs a bit more. There's some man that will do adapting. There's just some man you just know are not going to be levels. Ainsley, that's the thing. Ainsley wouldn't have a future. He played five games and he's got one. Do you think Pepe deserves more minutes tonight? I mean, he deserves more minutes in general. I just want the best team that's going to get night, that that's going to put in a performance against Liverpool. And do I feel if I was naming the strongest eleven? I'm not saying Pepe wouldn't because I think there's debate on that left-hand side, but I don't think I would start him, honestly. So, yeah, man. And I, I, I was, bro, I remember that one, you know, I think it was England international duty and I think England were training at Arsenal them times. I was praying, yo, Wells, man, they've got to find out. This guy's got a dodgy knee. There's got to be something. Dan Crowley was lit. I, spoke, I, I can't lie, I did speak to an ex-Arsenal scout who said at one point he, he has the ability to have, if he really wants it, he can do this thing. But concerns over the attitude, which I, you know, this was a quite a good scout. This was one, of, I, I, well, I don't want to name names, but if you, if you know already, you know, he's an ex-Arsenal scout. He, I remember, I told you a lot before, I was, shout out to him in it because I ripped it. Beer scouts and he replied, he actually called me and we spoke about him, Malin, all of these guys. I remember Arsene Wenger saying that he's a bit lightweight. I, and again, he was the guy I was thinking of. I'm seeing a, an organic 10 going and playing 4-4-2 narrowly and things like that. It isn't going to work. The loans didn't work. Obviously, he's found his feet per se. He's not really having the career that we thought. But yeah, man, it just shows you, you know, potential and things. It sometimes could be unfair because this might be all that he was ever destined to be, really. But yeah, he was lit, man. He was lit. At times, he would look like a mini Jack Wilshere. He was lit, man. He had the X Factor. He had the swagger as well, man. He believed in himself. It'd be good to bring on Pepe at like 64th minutes, let him run at Liverpool for the rest of the game. It all depends. Like I can't sit here. I don't know what the game's going to look like. So it'd be lovely, but I can't sit here and, and say, I don't, I don't know what the context of the game is going to be. Respectfully. You know how I always talk about how there was times where Santi Ozil and Alexis, they'd all play together. For, I don't know why, but it's like they would bring him in. It's like Alexis in particular, it's like he really liked playing with Welves. He would always snake Welves in. You know, sir, if you know, if you're a if you're a goal, if you're a goal getter, you know it, innit? You know when you play certain passes to people, you delay certain passes so that they have to give it back to you. So they can't necessarily have an opportunity for themselves. Alexis always was on adapting to Welves. Always. 
if we if we replace Xhaka and Laka, we have a Champions League level starting eleven for the next few years. Trust. No, it's just it'll just be about having a squad. Brighton can do us a favor tonight. Oh, I can't lie. Graham Potter always rolls over for them Spurs twats, man. Always rolls over for them, man. So I, I don't know what he's on. I don't, I don't admittedly, I don't have much faith. I would love it. You know, Brighton had a very good start and a decent game against Liverpool, but I don't have faith in them, man. Dear man. I, I listen, Graham, please, please prove me wrong. Watching him back, Alexis was bare selfish. I'd be too if I had that South American tip. <laughs> Cannot cap to you. I'd be selfish as well, man. Unfortunately, I'm not. Don't even remember, to be fair. Don't even remember. Don't even remember, Sandra. I'll be real. I don't even remember. This summer is massive for sales. Also, obviously, transfers in will be massive, but earning money from lower quality players will be big in funding our moves. Trust. I don't think it will play much of a part because he's really bringing in significant P's. But what I would say is I agree with you. You know, you've got rid of a bad man. You're kind of not right in the wrongs, but we're kind of getting away from that. If we keep tearing up contracts, we're not. But we're kind of getting away, away from that. So I kind of agree with you in that indirectly who we get rid of kind of impacts who comes in you know what you do with actually Balogun's short-term impact you know because he's gonna he's probably not gonna go on loan straight away unless a striker returns obviously if you bring in Lacquer let's not lie there's probably some healthy wages he's earning really you know there's stuff with that if you get rid of him there's 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 issues obviously you look at people who probably need to go I'll be very upset if you don't get it's still a loss but if you don't make your peas um on what's his face, man? You should be able to make some money on Torreira. He's actually doing all right out of these loan, these loan donnies. So you should be able to get some money there. Uh, Ainsley Maitland now. So I hope Everton stay in the Premier League. They're stupid enough to still offer us twenty million for him. Well, hopefully Wolves can do us a favour there. Uh, obviously Reese Nelson, you'll probably be lucky to get five or so million for him. Still think he could have a decent future, but it's looking like it's a myth now. There, you know, Leno. Can you get? Some, I don't think we'll make our bread back, but can you get something there on Leno? Um, what off the top of my head, main Ainsley Maitland Niles, Reese Nelson, Torreira, Bellerin. Uh, there's so many, man. I need to write them down because I'm forgetting them. Sorry, people, because I want to remember the actual names Leno, Maitland, 2023s, Nelson, Bellerin, Torreira. Yeah, that's five. And then I, it's not 2023, but you might even throw Marie there. I would even say Cedric. Obviously, Cedric is probably someone Arteta is going to keep. You know, he's happy to play when he can, et cetera, et cetera. And I do think based on the last four or five games, fans will look at him a bit differently. But, you know, that's someone that maybe, you know, if he's played if, if he's played his way into form and teams are looking, I might say, yo, go and get some peace for that. Bring in a more younger, reliable sort of guy, because I'll be real, Cedric's done all right, but... Brentford, you was kind of booked. They kind of fancy you there, in it. So there's that. Obviously, that's who else is there? There's Bellerin, Nelson. They might, you know, Asterix next to Pepe. I don't know what's going to happen there. I don't feel Pepe should necessarily be forced out or one of the first out. Yeah, man. Obviously, you've got El Nene, Lacazette, these lot leaving to go with what you've seen with Collagen, Action, and Bamian and just freeing up wages. Obviously, you've got to put one near Lacazette. Eddie clearly not signing a new deal. Around 30 players could go. Xhaka, again, Xhaka is one of them subject double asterisks next to his name. He's one of them, I don't know, because it looked like one minute it looks like you're going, then you're not. I do think the midfield needs to be revamped, but Xhaka might stay for the first season in the Champions League and that, well, back in the Champions League. Leno's mentality is so poor to be comfortable with Ramsdale just stealing your spot with ease is embarrassing. Bit harsh, you know. I think that I think that's a bit harsh because we don't know that. I don't feel Leno is 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 like that, if I'm honest with you. And also, what do you want man to do? You know, I do think Leno had a move lined up, or there was a lay a loan, um, a, a loan or a move lined up, and something happened. You know, he's just been professional. I think that's very harsh on Leno, really. I still got no faith in Cedric, but I understand you. I ain't got no faith in Cedric like that. You know, if I give you energy when you're doing shit against Sunderland, after have to hail up your thing in the last games. I just don't respect them thing there. Them things for me, it's what I call hot and cold. It's like when Marie came into the team, it's, you know, it's not a thing. You know, it's not. Firm, no one the Hazard deal. Dan Crowley was that guy. It would be good to bring on Pepe against Liverpool at half time in the 64th minute.
even that Mavropanos, Gwendozi, these are guys that are half gone. So again, they, you could probably we've already got fees for them more or less in it. Maybe too prematurely, but some fees have been raised. Very harsh on Leno. Very harsh. And they weren't going to let Leno leave without bringing in the second trace goalie. And we was trying to bring in Ramsdale. So you can't be bringing, like, did they have time to bring in two? Now you've got Matt Turner. He probably does F off and things like that. That's harsh on Leno, my guy. Who said get rid of Tavares? A bit harsh on Tavares. He's hot and cold, but I think he's cool to show he can develop. Leno, Marie, Cedric, Tavares, Bellerin, Ainsley, Onene, Enketia, Jacquet, Bellerin, Torreira, Guendouzi, all players I wouldn't be sad to see. Go, I hear that. Leno ain't going to exactly fun putt Ramsdale or Teta Fris, but there's nothing he could do. Like, it just, if Ramsdale stunk up the place when he got his opportunity, Leno would still be number one, you know? I'm sure Leno's not happy because now that we're out of comps, you're not playing that. You need to go in the summer because even that Kevin Trapp, brother, I don't know what's going on now, but there was Kevin Trapp and there was other goalies making noise to the point where Leno may not have necessarily been one of the free keepers going to the World Cup. I think Tavares is very real, but harsh, man. Xhaka could stay if you put him in a rotation role, but depends on our... I need experience in the summer right now. Leno is OK, but time to move him on for him and the club. Edu does not know how to sell players. Mavropanos is balling over on loan. I wouldn't say balling, but I get your point. And we're letting him go for cheap. He's going to end up at Dortmund and be a player. Mark my words. He will have a decent career, but I'm not really stressed about Mavropanos game. But I do agree he should be making more peace, man. I mean, Barella's class, but the man there at Inter. So unless you're going to put some serious bread... I would love Jacob Ramsey, you know. Again, if Smith Rowe isn't called up for England, then Elise and Ramsey, they've got to be on Southgate's thinking. Surely. So, again, it depends, man. And based on what we're talking about with these sort of things, people, this is where, for me, Edu's got to earn his money this summer because I hail him up for bringing in players along with everyone else last summer. But Edu, Arteta's job isn't to sell, man. Arteta says, I like you, I don't like you. So either give man a new deal, which is your job to negotiate, sell man or bring man in. And uh, listen, I admire the club. It's not that I admire because I don't feel there's any anyone can be painted with glory. I think there was pros and cons to letting a bad man go and obviously pros and clear cons with not signing a striker, which we already know we've been down that street. What I will say away from that is that's where you want your director to earn your bread in the sense of I might be being a bit harsh on Edu, but them sort of things there where we can't get Vlahovic, where this is that can't come right now and people don't want to let man go. Sometimes it comes down to who's in the phone book, how experienced you are and whatever you're make, you're able to make work because you didn't even bring in a loan in that. So I, I don't know. Like, I don't know what's your legacy. If Arteta cuts tomorrow, I know he's won an FA Cup. He's put some little changes there. He's had a good summer, you know, which you was a part of. I don't really know what your thing is. You know, I haven't really seen you utilize the south american market i haven't really seen you make some smart additions you know i haven't really seen a consistency in the players that you want in arteta yes and you know i haven't really seen you sell anyone for decent obviously I might give him the joe willett credit but joe willett went forced out a lot forced to go on loan to newcastle and then what shall be shall be you know lack lacks approach with with eddie and ketia potentially we're waiting until the last pivotal summer last year to move him on so I would say this is where I need to see Edu learn his learn his craft because now we're trying to obviously we need players for the squad, but we're clearly trying to get that number eight to take this thing to the next level and a striker. Nobody wants to sell good players, and if they do, it's peace. So show earn your money for me as well. As we kind of said, selling players, earn your money. I'm sure Edu does a lot to those internally in the same way at a time people might not have seen what Arteta is doing slash done, but we did. And we might with Edu. And that's what I want to see. Me as an ignorant fan, I'm not if I'm sure if I was at London Coley, if I sat in on meetings, if I, I I would have a different view and we all would. But as an ignorant fan sitting here, I don't know what Edu's on. I give you credit for the market you had, but the same reports that said you you done your thing, you were screaming Neto, you were screaming Emerson Royal, you were screaming Duds. Even when we brought in Partey, allegedly at the time, we saw in these same athletic reports, Arteta wanted our. So, and I'm not saying I'm, I'm not happy with, with Edu and whatnot, but Edu gassed me. When Edu signed, I thought we was, 
I thought was doing the naively going to do the Bayern Munich thing. Obviously, he's nowhere near Bayern Munich level, and he didn't really, you know, when you look at his track record in Brazil and Corinthian, some of the reports on his job aren't the best. But it's the way he was like, yeah, I like to travel with the team. I like to feel part of it. You know, it felt like we're doing this sort of, like, you know, you see that some clubs, it was the Dubai trip them times, and I ain't really seen much, man. You know, and you said yourself in previous markets, or in, in, in next markets, better yet, when you said previously in that interview, we're going to look for, not word for word, more prestigious players, more guys sort of thing. So this is where I'm going to need to earn because I can say I want X, Y, Z. You need to make sure he when he gives you your pocket money, you're coming back with it. You know, you need to show that you're competent. When your mom sends you to the shop, you got to make sure you're coming back with the right things. Don't do what I did as a little kid once. I spent the change. got my ass kicked. <laughs> but like, yeah, man, like, it is what it is. So I need to learn. And as I said, just as an ignorant fan, I don't know. And, and you'd imagine, again, you need a midfielder. You need something. And something's got to happen because to in Edu's credit, you know, you did hear, you know, he spoke. We agreed a deal for Arthur Mello. The club, Kronke vetoed it. So if I'm being harsh again, what else could you do? All right, Arthur didn't. That Joe Bloggs is, it can come in for cheaper. Or that Joe Bloggs, they're willing to sell. Flip it. You have heard, you know, he's, he's had a conversation with Telemann's agent at London Coley. Remember back December times, he spoke with Jonathan David. So speak, everybody speaks with everybody. Speaking don't mean much, but Eddie's clearly on the case. So all, I, all I'm say, saying is I want to see what you're on, man. Eddie has to prove himself this summer. Which to us, it means nothing. Because if I was listening to this, Eddie, prove you what? Do you know I did this and that? But yeah, I would just like to know what you're on. If I'm completely honest. I, I don't. He can play. Jacob Ramsey would be lit. He can play as an eight. He's got an eye for goal. He scored some good finishes. Scored a good finish the other day. Scored a good finish against us. Reese Nelson still has potential. He's 23. It's just not going to happen here. He seems in the same boat as Callum Hodgson and Doyes that you look at these guys, everything they touch at, at, at youth level seems to turn to gold. I would say one thing about Nelson for me, he looks like a confidence guy. He looks like he needs to consistently be given confidence. And right now, you're in the harsh world of football. You need to find that confidence with, from within. Odegaard stays in the 11. We've never really been good. Exactly. You know, exactly. You know, again, and that's to be fair, there's inherent in, inherited issues. You know, we were given guys that probably wasn't the best options, big contracts before. But Arteta and Edu have come in and done the exact same thing. We've been poor at selling, man. But they've, you know, Edu's come in and, and fair enough, Joel Willett. But that's one good sell, tearing up deals. So you're right. There was problems that they've inherited. There's problems that they've created. But nonetheless, man knew what they were walking into. And the same way that um, Arteta is learning. Arteta, come on now. Arteta has made mistakes. He's a young manager. He's made mistakes. There's probably elements of he don't know, he don't know. And he's doing his thing on the job. When you look elsewhere, you look elsewhere and you obviously look at what's going on, what's what's going on with Edu. It's the same logic. And the thing is, who's there to tell him, yo, do it this way or maybe that and things. And as I keep saying, you know, you either, for me, you either have an experienced technical director and an inexperienced manager and an experienced manager and, and an inexperienced technical director. Very rarely do you have both. And clearly the club are reckoning it's working, but we'll have to see, man. Um, Eddie didn't identify Martinelli, so I would say no. We're not even at 200 likes doing the guy dirty, man. What's all this about? What's all this about? Edu needs to get Arsenal at least four or six players and offload players. To be fair, the loan obligations were poor prices and we should be asking for more. I hear that, you know. I, I hear that. I hear that, you know. Mavropanos, I mean, he could have got a bit more for him, you know, considering what's going on. Gwendozi probably could have got double if you let it come into this summer, but probably just committed it. Whatever eight we get has to be comfy covering mad ground to help when we press. I hear that. Which, ironically, I feel they all can. I, I hear that. That should be a given. A midfielder should be able to run around. But can we have a bit of quality? Can you get the ball turned and play a pass consistently? Like, consistently. Do them mad passes we waffle about consistently. 
And that's the thing. He does need guys around him. Obviously, Arte Edu probably does have that, but I don't know. And we're probably a bit harsh on Edu. There's probably things that he, he's tried to finesse, but he can't finesse and, and stuff. But as I said, as an ignorant fan, I could only go off what I see. How much realistically do you think we'll spend this summer excluding outgoings? Kai, I don't have a clue because, one, we don't know if we're going to have no Europe, Champions League or Europa League, technically. I don't know how much money's in the kitty. I, I don't have a clue. I don't have a clue. I would say it probably has to be 100 million odd. Again, maybe on lesser players, you know, but less players, more quality. Because, you know, again, unless scouts have done their job, if we just go on the names we're being linked with of strikers... You're looking at most conservative about 50 million and then upwards of about 80 to 100. A, a, a certified number eight, probably you're looking at 50 odd million, sort of 40, 50 odd million pounds, sort of region. So that's about 190 to 110 ish, sort of thing. That's for them two players there. We've heard Arteta wants a, a centre back. If it's going to be these Arojos, that's going to be peas. If you're going to get someone for the squad, that's about what 15 or so mil. That's a quick one. You know, so there's that. I don't know how much a backup right back. I don't know if we go for English players, will they carry an English premium? If one didn't spend their mum's change after buying bread, then they've never lived only for the brave DG. Trust, they've never lived, man. And I think I speak for most people, you know, obviously getting in trouble. There's only so many times you can, well, you can get in trouble bare times, but like how much times you can get beats? Like, it's pain's temporary, isn't it, man? I firm my beats, you know, and then I'm back out here, isn't it? So... Yeah, man, you've never lived. You've never, ever lived. Never, ever lived. Never lived. <laughs> Stupid ass decisions, man. I used to hate getting going sent shop. Like, I'm going to buy that banana card so you can call back yard. I used to hate getting sent shop. Man. Fuck them. Send me to the shop. Fuck. But yeah, it was one of them. Rather, the like button got a new effect. Hopefully. Big up Arsenal. There's some things I can't blame Eddie for, like Juventus stalling on. I I blame us for the pursuit of Vlahovic because there should have been some encouragement. But then you see things saying, yo, he said he's going, he's going Juventus from October time. So that one there was a myth. Um, that one there was a myth. Arthur, I don't, you know, he agreed a fee. Cronkays vetoed it. So I feel somewhat safe for him, man. That you're lucky, boy. My mum and dad always wanted that damn change. They man, how old I was? You better come back with that change, bro. I dad knew I'm sending you to buy this. It cost this. Bring this. And if he didn't, man, brought I had to bring receipts. Said that man. Just, it's so silly. Might be able to, you know, finesse it. Like get myself a little sweet. It's not. It, you'll see it on the receipt. It's not the end of the world. But yeah, man. The only time it was happy days is if you know. R.I.P. Nan, man. I used to. Obviously, you know when Nans have a soft spot, you know how to for play it with Nan. You go shopping with Nan. Can we just look in that shop? Oh, this is nice. I would use this all the time. I would eat these sweets. <laughs> like, I remember my mum wouldn't buy me GTA. Nan thing quickly. Nan, you got with green, yeah? What? Well, obviously, it's, you know, look at you these times. What you got with green, yeah? Shall I come, Nanny? Get on that one four four. Nan, you want to go market? You want to go here? You can go there. All right, cool. Let's go there. Let's behave myself. Best behavior. Oh, Nan, can we, can we just walk in game? You know the ones there? You go, you go. Nostalgia. You go, you look at the game. You look at it bare times like it's going to change. Start looking. You wait for them to come over. Oh, it's a good game. Or you, if you're not, you have to go walk and bring it to them. And then well, it's, it's standard, isn't it, man? Like... <laughs> Oh, and obviously, when you're young and naive, man, what do you know, man? All four Ruiz are the eights I want personally trust. I mean, Fabian Ruiz would be lovely, but he seems like he's stalling. Like, he's not necessarily not on joining Arsenal, but he's not necessarily going to move head over heels to, to, to do this thing, if it makes sense. Brazy. So, we'll have to see, man. Which you prefer, Osimhen or, Nu or Nunes? I think Osim is more of a striker, but new either one, man. Either one. Because I really do like Darwin Nunes. I'll have to go Nunes because I've been giving him slightly more DJ DG propaganda. What the fuck? Taking pictures of what? DG propaganda, but I don't know, man. Difficult, 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 difficult. Yeah, Gallagher, we probably got no chance, mate. Raw Joey, man. You want me for your match? <laughs> Oh, man, both of them 100%. I think Ruiz is waiting for them Spanish clubs to call, man. If we can operate, why not? DG, do you think 
clubs are lingering over Basuma because it is. Oh, I, I don't know, man. I, just, I, I don't know. I don't know about the legal issues with Basuma. Probably because in this day and age, you don't want any of that, really. And until he probably busts the, these cases or is found guilty or whatever, then there's that one. I still want Broya. Same, but again, Chelsea. By the time that we're able to do really talk about transfers and that, it's a myth. We'll have to see, really. Should we have one last circle for Arsenal content? No, it's just Arsenal Liverpool, and which which is later, people, which almost wish it wasn't, you know. Having such a good day. We've had such a good period. We don't need to come back to reality. I'm liking Cloud9 a lot, man. I'm loving Cloud9. Apparently, Martinelli said he's an on our tether. He's an excellent coach and also a great person. He always brings us new things, different ways of playing, so that we have variations within our game. He's a person who helps me a lot. He's always with the group, creating a very good atmosphere. I think he's a coach who'll be very successful in his career. A club of Arsenal's stature and importance always has to win the Premier League, but we know there are other big teams, and this is the challenge for us. I, I like the way. Martinelli talks both. It's almost like he forgets where we are. Would you take Che Adams? Allow me, man. We're not doing Love Island. We're going to win 5 0 this evening, DG. What you want to I hope so, man. I mean, Rigi don't really score religiously, my guy. He does score. He's in folklore. He does his thing. Liverpool can be in a position where Rigi can score one goal in 10 years because every other week, Salah, these guys are doing the thing. The one game he's not, Rigi come into it. 192 likes. You're acting really impressed with Lever Mental. Come on. I, I like what you I like what you lot are doing. I like what you're doing, but Hazard is probably just worse, man. Abamian has already outscored that Duke. You're on him. True, and he's been there five minutes. You ain't getting a Rojo. We'd probably know we're not, but it's a talking point nonetheless, man. <laughs> you know, we all probably don't buy that one. You know, I think Man United got more of a chance, really. I think Man United should press ahead with that one because you're seeing what Mr. Has is on. I ain't trying to get hit with no reality check today. I'm going to see that. <laughs> I hear that, man. I'm not on the Origi thing, man. All right. <laughs> it's a myth, man. DG, bro, the dressing room is drowning behind you. Must be a leak. Trust. <laughs> hey, it's more like the, the poor green screen, my guy, man. What can I say? They, Do you know what? They said they're refurbishing the Emirates in, in the summer. We're waiting, my guy. We need a Rojo. <sighs> Big game merchant, I hear it. I'm more worried about y'all. The guy has our number. Jogba reincarnated. I'm sh Jota, Mane, Salah. You know, Diaz is probably they're probably sitting there like, hey, bro, this is where you stat pad these Arsenal games, man. They're playing holding and that. No, obviously, it's not holding. This is where you get your goals. So, boy, it is what it is. And I think we spoke about the statistics. They've scored in 37 of the last 38. So, if Arsenal are to win, it's probably not a clean sheet affair. But we pray, we pray, we hope and pray, man. Speaking of praying, big up Rochelle for being here. 3 1 Arsenal. That's what my heart says, anyways. My head says, yeah. We probably spoke about it, but what do you... Uh, why is this not coming up? What's going on here? Listen, Liverpool got bare, man. Firmino, Firmino... Do you know what it is with them Liverpool, man? They disrespect us. Like, Mane's just savage. Like, Mane's... There's no skills. He's just savage. Running past everyone, weights and everyone is what it is. Salah's just ripping, man. Firmino's just crazy disrespectful. Jota's a bit of it. Oh, really? And Diaz, bro, I already see what he's got to his game with them. So, you... I'm sure I've seen Firmino do that against us, you know. I think two of the most disrespectful finishes I've ever seen scored against Arsenal, I would say Firmino's no look. I would say Messi where he... <laughs> you had to, it's Messi, isn't it? But he's he's chipped it over Albunio. Yeah, but they're two of the most disrespectful goals I've seen against my football club. But they might love playing against us. There's no update. We're just going to have to see with Gabriel. But as you said, we hope all is well first. Um, for them lot uh, Music man In relation to our games to come I'm so happy you reminded me of that Because we actually Actually have not spoken on that people Fixture list from hell um, As we would say As you know our games got rescheduled And that now means Well it's up here You know with our games being rescheduled people For TV rights Clearly it's all on It's all fucking on TV Look look It's all, it's all bloody on TV ain't it mate Look All of them 
I don't give a fuck about us. This is if we need to capitalize on this top four battle, especially with what's going on with Chelsea. So it's a shag, people. We can confirm that our Premier League match against Chelsea will now be played as below. You've got you've got on Wednesday the twentieth, Chelsea away. Three days later, United, and then after that, West Ham. And this is everyone's got to play everyone. Everyone. United and Chelsea, well, United's got nothing, Chelsea's got nothing to do with it. But if you're West Ham United and Manchester United, this is where you're hoping before it, but this is where Arsenal crumble and, and, and things like that. So, yeah, man, it's, it's, it's brazy. So we're going to have to do it. And I think yesterday I actually copied and pasted our final league positions. And again, you ain't seen the Google Doc sheet for a minute. Look at that sexy face, man. In fact, look at this sexy face. Are you mad? I know the baby mama's pre me. Like, oh my God, he... He talks about Arsenal. I love the dedication. I love the work rate. He's so good looking. I'm definitely the roughest YouTuber in this space. Like, come on. Come on now. Like, look at the chocolate band. Come on now. All right, let me stop now, man. It's soon time to dump people. Um, Exactly. They want them views, blood. They don't give a fuck about nothing else. But anyways, you look at our run of games, people. Boy, no easy games. Villa away. Uh, excluding Liverpool today, obviously. Villa away. Palace away. Brighton, Southampton away, Chelsea. Whoa, bloody hell, man! There's this is, this is it. United, West Ham away. United at home, West Ham away. Leeds, Newcastle, Everton. Now, I expect nine points from here. Um, and I say that with the most respect to St James's Park. That is not going to be easy. Or uh, Everton will probably be fighting relegation. Them times, I need to do stuff there. Um. Arsenal leads, we need to take points. Of course, I would sacrifice it, man. I go get Emirates all the time, or not so much this year. Uh, West Ham away is going to be brazy. United, we need revenge, but they always do the Bandulu thing against us. Stamford Bridge, I hope Smith Rowe and Martin. These problems with Chelsea continue. Southampton away, I'm shook. Brighton home and away, I'm always shook. Villa, I'm shook. Palace, I'm shook. The whole fixture calendar, it feels like our form, we could do something in these games. It feels like we could. Do so, we couldn't, we couldn't. As I always say, half of these teams are fixtures I look for in the beginning of the season. And you can't just look at, on the best of days of Arsenal, you can't just look at it and say, yeah, we're going to win here, we're going to win there, we're going to win there. It's not well like that. I'm always on a, I'm And the Spurs thing as well. The Spurs thing as well. We need to do the Viking thing. High self, high self esteem day. I'm always on high esteem day. I've got every reason to fucking be. I've got, you know, I'm blessed to have you lot supporters on Twitch and YouTube. God, Took his time with me, gave me brains and looked. That like, fucking you know, man, man. Got to praise this hand. There's got. There's definitely got to be a god. Like, come on now, man. Like, come on, come on, come on. The modeling agency shout, man, hundred percent. But yes, isn't it? We're gonna have to show up. You know, we 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 clawed back our on a serious note. We've clawed back our season. It's now down down to us to write whatever narrative we want. Hazard would disrupt the progress of Martinelli if he doesn't mind coming off the bench. Then I would take him. His career basically peaked, anyways. Uh, how about that? But right. in terms of disrupt the progress, you know, players just can't play for the fact that they're young. You need a squad. There is too many games in the season for anyone to say anything is won or lost. Amen. All these matches look tough, but that's what City and Liverpool would be licking their lips at, probably. But we're not either club. And you know what they say, if you can't win, don't lose. I mean, I'm waiting for Haaland as well, man. I'm also waiting for Kelly Rowland. So, you tell me when we're getting this, this Uber out of Dreamville. Yeah, yeah. Well, Czech used to get embarrassed. Czech used to get embarrassed all the time. Man. Firmino is being slept when he loves playing versus you. Like, he does, but I just don't know if he's going to start. But then again, Jota comes off the bench and bags against us. Are you confident in tonight's game? I'm confident as long as we stick to our game plan. I hope Brighton is a is, is a W. Southampton away, I'm never confident. Palace away is always difficult. Spurs away, when last did we win there? And Conquer would be lit. Arteta wants players in his squad that fall in line and we are linked with Hazard, the man who's notorious for not putting training properly and putting in a shift. I mean... Arteta was with, you know, Arteta seen JJ or Kocha and Ronaldinho. You know, certain man training thing isn't really adapting. But you're right, though. You're right. Away from the humour. I mean, Leon Bailey's he's Jamaican, isn't it? So, arguably, the, for me, he's arguably the best player in the Premier League, along with Mikel Antonio and Ethan Pinnock. So, bring him. Would you take Firmino? Of course, it looks right. 
I mean, he wouldn't necessarily cut his game time. I mean, if we want to be a team that competes in the Premier League and competes, then you need a squad, you know? If that logic, you know, then Harvey Elliott, well, you need to back yourself. If we're meant to be a big club, you've got a target on your back. If you're wearing the number seven, if you're wearing the number 10, if you're wearing the number nine or whatever number Martinelli hopes, you're not just going to play for the sake of it. That was the same logic they said with not buying Odegaard for Smith Rowe. I hear you, but, you you know, people said that at the start. You play, make yourself unplayable, you know, because on one hand, you're right. But on the other hand, as much as I'm a big Martinelli fan, you know, I don't think, you know, if you want to play, you make it so you can't be dropped. It doesn't matter who comes into this club on the right-hand flank. Nesaka starting, or he's at least not going to stay to the point where he needs some competition. So I hear you, but psh, you need competition. You look at Harvey Elliott, Curtis Jones, they're in the squad because Klopp believes in them. At times they've played big games because they've eclipsed other people. Phil Foden is a fantastic player, but he's there because he's he's throwing his, he's letting his nuts hang. Smith throw the same, Saka the same, you know. Callum Hudson, I leave it out. <laughs> had to, had to. But you're right, he would cut his game down. But again, what if there's a... Oh, am I going to... If, if a talented... Away from Hazard now, if a talented left winger that could help the club became available and he's on joining us and he plays in a similar position, am I going to say not to sign these players because of this? No. Like, come on now. Like, there's a fine line between balance and unbalance. I agree with you, but there needs to be an element of ruthlessness. Arsenal going to win. You got this G1. You're shameless. Get the hell out of here. You as a United fan, you was thinking, gassing it. But isn't but it isn't the right time to start thinking about such signings. For us fans, it is, because we don't, we're not involved in transfers, are we? I'll feel less nervous when the game starts, man, to be honest with you. I'll feel a lot less nervous when the game starts, people. 204 likes. I appreciate that, people. On that note, though, I can't cap to you. It is lunchtime, folks. So I'm going to do exactly that. But as I said, I would rather have it as well. I'm just saying more away, away, from, away from that, away from Hazard. I'm just saying in general. And I don't want Hazard just off his name. It's if he's going to improve. I don't advocate not bringing in players just because some... Are we doing Sunday League or something else? So yeah, man. People, make sure you're there. That's at set. That's at eight fifteen kickoff. Seven fifteen better yet. Rafina's lip. You know, you, Rafina's defo paying you. So there's that one, people. Don't forget. Hey, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? In fact, no, that's it. I'm bugging out. I'm bugging out. That's it. I've set the link. So yeah, man. They wanted to add that tension and they want to make sure that people see a couple of other games. I would be doing the Champions League watch along, but we're playing today. So, yeah, that's going to be on YouTube and Twitch. I'm going to be live at 4.30. It's lunchtime, people. So, yeah, it's a jam-packed day of content. Tomorrow's a jam-packed day of content. Friday's a jam-packed day of content. Saturday's a jam-packed day of content. Sunday's a jam-packed day of content. Unfortunately, international break's going to start getting involved. But next week, we still do our thing. Appreciative to you lot who have tuned in, wherever you've tuned in, your talking points, your engagement, your differences of opinions, your viewpoints, everything is welcomed. As usual, people, I appreciate all the support you lot give me across both my platforms. It wouldn't it wouldn't make sense being here waffling day in and day out, people, without you guys. So, yeah, God bless you lot. You lot have a keep having a progressive day slash week and we'll back up again. G1, you're shameless because you see, you know, you might say fuck the Champions League, but it is where it is. On that note, why should we sign Hazard when I got. Like...